Well, hello and good evening. I am Rodney Bush. I have been with SNAP Partners, the parent company of who we're all involved with since the beginning, just like Mr. Alex Scar, who I'm going to introduce here in just a minute. Now, we're at an incredible time in our business life. People are coming out of the woodwork, uh, who I've been around for years, who haven't done anything business-wise, are coming out now and saying, wow, this looks incredible. What is this? This is Revo Rideshare. And tonight's topic is going to be onboarding. Uh, I'm privileged to have been uh, actually awarded the Rhino Award this year at convention. And I'm number two, but Alex was the first Rhino. And there's a lot that's good about Alex. I've gotten to know Alex over the years now. Uh, at first, I just knew him as a corporate guy, a trainer. Uh, one of the coolest trainers, he is systematic, rhythmatic. He is, you know, you could put some more matics to that, and that would define the great job that Alex does in training. Uh, he is trained in several categories with SNAP, but what matters tonight is the onboarding for Revo and Rideshare. We want everybody to get acquainted with who we are, what we do, and the cool thing about this is you can send this recording to all of those who miss that, which is hundreds and even thousands of people who have joined the network. We're growing really quickly. We're about to open in Miami Friday. That's just two days away. Today is February 28th. And just a little bit more about Alex. Uh, Alex lives in Phoenix, Arizona. I've learned that it's the only, one of the two time zones that doesn't change. So uh, Alex has known Paul Michael for a couple decades and Tony some time as well, Tony Swantek. And with, I tell you, just, I could say a lot about Alex, but it's good to have been trained by Alex in the restaurant space, in the employee retention credit space. He's done a great job to teach everybody in the company. So he's uh, one of the original webmasters or web people, web geeks. I don't want to call him a geek or not, but uh, he's done a lot of things. Alex, tell them what you need them to know if you wish. And you can, of course, you know, tell us about uh, Revo and Rideshare and on board us. Nice. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks. Always uh, kind words, Rodney. And uh, me and Rodney, we uh, we got to know each other pretty close. Last time I was out in Florida, we uh, we spent some about five days together in some close quarter spaces. And, uh, you know, he's a, an amazing guy. And uh, I know he's kind of helping lead the charge with Revo. Uh, and if you're not, if you're just coming on and you're brand new, uh, so maybe someone just came up to you and said, hey, there's a new rideshare company. You guys should jump on. You make more money. And maybe you just got the fast pitch. Uh, but Revo is short for revolution, and that's exactly what we're doing here. We're starting a rideshare revolution. Uh, not only will we revolutionize uh, the technology behind rideshare, we will be the only rideshare company that will be built on the blockchain uh, as of uh, right now, um, but we are also going to start a revolution giving the power of back to the riders and the drivers. Because uh, at the end of the day, rideshare companies, we're just software, we're just apps. And without the actual people using their cars to go pick up people, that's all we are. But unfortunately, with those other rideshare companies, they give the little piece of the pie to the people doing the most amount of work. And then the corporate bigwigs and everyone else are, of course, uh, you know, taking advantage of the larger piece of the spoils. So, um, but we want to change that. And uh, Snap Partners, we are a company that is built on disruption. We find industries that need fixing and we come up with innovative solutions and then we implement those to help with change. And along the way, uh, we offer people an opportunity to join and link arms with us and then grow and earn with us uh, with everything that we do. Uh, we started off as a food delivery service where we disrupted the food delivery industry. A lot of restaurants were, you know, getting charged 20 to 30 percent just to have someone come pick up the food, just to be on those platforms. And my family being in the restaurant industry for over 30 years, uh, restaurants is really one of the lowest margin industries out there because there's a lot that goes into it besides just the cost of food. Um, and that's why a lot of restaurants end up failing is because just because you love to cook doesn't mean you know how to run a restaurant. So getting charged that much, it was killing a lot of them. Uh, so Paul Michael, who, you know, like uh, Rodney said, I've known for a couple of decades, and he was actually one of my original business mentors. He took me under his wing when I was uh, just 19 years old. He used to live here in Arizona with me. Um, and he saw something in this, you know, shy Asian kid from Phoenix and, you know, kind of uh, taught me the ways of business. We've been in multiple businesses together over the years. Uh, but because of him, it really laid the foundation for 
uh, you know, my work ethic and, you know, dealing with people and, you know, building teams, building business and just trying to be successful in everything I do. Am I always successful? No, but that's just life and business. But sometimes you got to take risks and sometimes those risks pay off and sometimes they don't. But with what we're doing here with Revo, this is by far probably one of the best opportunities I've seen in a long time. And I know we said that a lot about the ERC program, uh, but I think this is going to dwarf even what ERC is. And if you guys are unfamiliar, we also do financial services. We're actually one of the largest tax uh, agencies out there that does specialty tax programs, helping businesses and business owners claim a lot of free funds and, you know, uh, back from the IRS. Uh, so that's another part of our business. So, but with Rideshare, um, we wanted to do something different. We wanted to really kind of help out the drivers. I don't know if you guys have ever driven Rideshare before. Uh, I was a Rideshare driver for a few years, years ago, uh, you know, for, uh, probably two years. I drove for Lyft. I drove for Uber. I have thousands of rides under my belt, and I can probably write a book about all of the crazy experiences I've had over the years. But um, the thing that I noticed is we started making less and less money. Actually, let me uh, let me pull up my slide. Do I have the ability to share there, Rodney? Hold on. He's going to give me ability to share, and I can share my screen. So. You know how to do that, Rodney? You're on mute, by the way. There we go. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, Rodney, everybody. All right, uh, here we go. So again, um, we're launching our very first city. Uh, it's actually in two days. It's a fantastic news. We've been uh, promoting this since January 11th. That's when we kind of, uh, you know, put the word out. I mean, we've been working on this for quite a long time, I actually worked on uh, some of the software uh, last year uh, for a different project. And we ended up turning that into what it is today uh, with the help of James. James is actually our current developer. He's fantastic and by far has taken uh, the, ride, the Rideshare app to the next level. And then everything that we're doing on the blockchain is going to definitely take, the, take it to the next game. But we're two days away from launching in Miami, Florida. Uh, some of you guys probably have already been marketing out there, have a lot of people uh, super excited for the launch. But that's going to be the first city uh, we're probably going to run that for about one to three weeks just to make sure that everything runs perfectly. We want to make sure that it's a great experience for the riders, for the drivers. Uh, everything works flawlessly as far as the apps go. And then once we uh, you know, pass that milestone, we'll just go ahead and start launching it out everywhere. So, But what sucks about rideshare, and again, I was a rideshare driver for a long time, is there was a lot of earning fluctuations. When I first started, we made 60 to 70%. And it was really the golden era for rideshare. You can make a lot of money just by working part-time. Um, and that was fantastic. It's one of the only ways that I found that you can just work when you wanted to work, turn on your app, go and pick some people up, make some money and go shut it off and go you know, uh, go about your business. But it went from 60 to 70% to they kept lowering it and lowering it. And now rideshare drivers are lucky to get 40 to 50%. So on a $100 ride, let's say, they're only getting 40 to $50 out of that, but they're putting all the wear and tear in the cars and the, uh, the miles and the gas and the maintenance and dealing with the drunk customers and everything else. Um, and it really started becoming a full-time job to make part-time money. And that's why a lot of drivers are upset right now. That's why uh, back on Valentine's Day, they actually had a lot of coordinated or kind of uncoordinated strikes to try to get Uber to change their ways. But unfortunately, when you're going up against uh, an 800 pound gorilla like Uber, all they do is pay the other drivers that are willing to work uh, and they'll go ahead and pick up those rides. And it really didn't affect them one bit, them going on strike. So, but that's why we created this platform to give drivers another option. They have choice between Lyft and Uber and which one is going to screw them more uh, or less. And I guess they'll just go with whichever one. But now we have another player in the ring, which is going to be Revo. Again, we're starting the rideshare revolution where we're giving the drivers an option to get paid what they're worth. Um, so with the other driving companies, you have high commission fees, which means they charge a lot of fees. Like you get, uh, that's why you only make 40 to 50% because they take so much in fees. Uh, and even Lyft, they even promise their drivers, hey, we're going to give you 70% of the ride. And drivers were ecstatic. But what they didn't read is 70% after we take out our fees and they just added more fees. So it really ended up 
back to the 40 to 50 percent. Uh, they just move numbers around. It's all a shell game with those guys. So uh, but driver ratings is another thing. I mean, you will have a lot of times that drivers will get ding. Maybe they have a customer that had a bad day or whatever, or some customers, they just you know don't give anyone five stars. But unfortunately, you have a lot of driver ratings, uh, sometimes deactivations without any clear cause. I've known drivers that have been on platforms for eight plus years, have 20,000 rides, five stars, and then one customer will say something or something happened on that ride and he immediately get deactivated. No questions from the driver. No, hey, what's your side of the story? Just, hey, we're going to go ahead, deactivate you, and we'll figure it out later. You can file an appeal, and then we'll go through it. But in the meantime, that driver's no longer making money. Unfortunately, if that's your only form of income, and they get deactivated, well, guess what? Now they're out of a job, and they have to go figure out something out. So that's another thing that we wanted to combat. But then there's oversaturation of drivers. There's some cities that won't bring on new drivers because there's too many to begin with. And there are some cities that don't have enough drivers, but there's lots of issues with these other companies. And we wanted to go ahead and change those and make it better, make it for better for everybody. Uh, the only thing we can't really change is the unpredictable passengers. It uh, doesn't matter what rideshare company you have, there's always going to be unpredictable, uh, unpredictable passengers, but hopefully we can fix everything else. So um, we our technology company, uh, we spent a lot of time, money, effort on building the backbone of what is Revo Ride. So uh, the apps are downloadable today. You can go to revoride.com uh, and you're going to see uh, direct links to the, both the Apple Store and the Android Store, the Play Store, to be able to download both the driver and the customer app. Uh, so, but we have been working on this technology for a long time and we wanted to make sure that uh, we give the best fares to the drivers, uh, you know, get them the most amount of money, have our customers pay less and really just offer a better service. So uh, on the left, the video that's going, it's just, you know, the app actually working, which you can download the app today uh, and check it out for yourself. So, but I really want to get more into what makes this different, you know, because we're jumping into the ring with two 800 pound gorillas and people, when I tell people we're getting a ride here, they're like, you do realize that these companies are worth billions of dollars and, you know, they can probably just price you out of the market. And on a normal day, I would say, yeah, that's probably true. But with our business model and the way that we're attacking this, we will win. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, it's because we have a people's army. And sometimes when you get a people's army or a rebellion, again, this is a, uh, a revolution, um, that can be a lot uh, more powerful uh, than the powers that be. So with our program, we make sure that the drivers get all of whatever the gas, the mileage, the tip and the time. So whatever the fare is, they're going to get all of it or 100% of it minus just $1. We're keeping a dollar and that goes into our pay plan. And of course, we got to keep a little bit for ourselves. But on top of that, the customer has three ways to pay. So the driver's always going to make the same. They're always going to make all of whatever the gas mileage tip and time is. Uh, if they have to wait in traffic or anything else like that. It's all going to be there and they just leave $1. So instead of making 40 to 50%, they're making all of it just minus $1. But on top of that, the customer has three ways to pay. They can either pay $5 per ride. So every single time they take a ride, they pay whatever the gas mileage tip and time is plus $5. So we keep the $5. Uh, that's how we kind of make our money. But 60 cents of every dollar that we keep, we actually pay back out as residual referral fees. And that's our, really our special sauce and what's going to help us grow is because we compensate and pay people to invite other people to our app. We have a better platform. And instead of us spending a ton of money on marketing and advertising and commercials and podcasts and all these other things, we would rather pay the people or our people's army to go out and refer other people to the app and get compensated. Almost like uh, micro ownership, if you will, because every customer or driver you bring on, you're going to get compensated off that individual forever. So the customer can either pay $5 per ride, uh, $30 a month. So if you have a customer that does more than six rides in a month, it just makes sense that they're on our freedom pass or our freedom pass. All they do is pay the gas mileage tip and the time uh, that stays the same, but they don't pay the extra $5 that's built in. So if they take 30 rides a month, it's still just going to be the $30 a month. Or they can buy the annual Freedom Pass, which is $250. So, but the beautiful thing about that is we have a referral program. So uh, for our customers and for our drivers. So one of the other benefits of being a driver with our company, Revo, is 
Not only do we pay you the most uh, compared to any other rideshare company out there, plus you get 100% of your tips. There are instances where the other companies do take a portion of the tips, which we think is wrong, which is why we want to make sure you get 100%. But our drivers can also take advantage of our residual referral program. And if they invite other customers and drivers, they can earn residually. Uh, so even when they're not driving, they can still have money coming in. When I was a rideshare driver, if I decided to take the day off or my car broke down or I was sick, I didn't make any extra money that day. It just the way it was. They didn't pay me to take time off. I'm an independent contractor. Uh, and so I only get paid when I'm out there you know, doing my thing. So with our program with uh, through referrals, they can actually earn income to, uh, you know, regardless if they're driving or not. And maybe to a point where they make more money and they don't need to drive anymore. And then they can just go and promote. So, but let's talk about that. What do I make? How, what does the referral program look like? So um, the referral program comes off of, again, we give 60 cents of every dollar back out in residual referral fees. So out of the $5, that's what we keep in house you're gonna get 20% of that. If you invite another customer to the app, so you sign up as a free customer or you're sign up as a free driver, either way you get your own referral codes. So you take that referral code and you give it to a potential customer, potential driver, and if they sign up, in this case, the customer, they pay the $5 and out of that you get 20% or $1, but every single time they take a ride for the life of that customer. Uh, so if they take five rides in a week, you make $5 off that particular customer. If you get 5,000 of those and they all take a ride today, well, guess what? You're going to make $5,000 today. If all 5,000 customers take another ride again next week, well, guess what? You're making another $5,000 next week. It's off of every single transaction. Or if the customer is on our Freedom Pass, which is $30 a month, again, they don't pay the $5 per ride. The gas mileage and tip always stays the same, but you're going to get 20% of that or $6 per month. So if you have a thousand people and they're all on the Freedom Pass and you're getting paid $6 off of each one of those, well, that's $6,000 a month in residual income. And again, these are all just examples. I can't promise you that you're going to go and get a thousand people. Some people may never invite anyone to the app and they're just a customer. But if you do invite people to the app, the more people you invite, the more potential you have to make money. If you don't invite anyone, well, unfortunately, you don't make any money. But again, you're not paying any money to be on our platform and you can just be customer or a driver. We need those as well. So, but if someone's on the annual pass, uh, 250 per year, then you're going to get 20% of that or $50 every single year that they re-up with us. So, um, but that's on the customer side. But on the driver side, remember they leave that dollar uh, and we take 60 cents of that dollar. Again, 60 cents of every dollar. Uh, in this case, it is a dollar. So 60 cents gets paid back out as referral fees. So whoever provided that driver, they get 20% of that $1 or 20 cents. But every single time that driver makes a ride. And as a ex ride share driver, you can do 10, 15 rides a day pretty easy. So if you invite 100 drivers and say, hey, there's a better platform, you can make more money, here, sign up with my referral code. And let's say they all just do 10 rides a day. So that's 1,000 rides a day. Or if you're making 20 cents off of each one of those rides, that's $200 a day because you told 100 drivers about a better platform where they can actually get paid what they're worth. Um, we do have some opportunities where you can earn on overrides for building teams. Again, we want to grow this as fast as possible. And some people will see the vision like we see the vision. And they'll say, hey, if you're going to pay uh, someone residual income to go and bring people onto an app, and this is a better app and I believe in it, I'm going to go tell everyone. I'm a marketing person or I know influencers or what have you, uh, you can bring those people on. And if they go and bring people on, then you can earn overrides. So we'll get into that a little bit more, uh, possibly another day, but I just wanted to kind of give you a basic overview of the company. So some of you on this call have known me and known to this company for a long time, but some of you are new. And the point of these calls, and we're gonna do them weekly until we open up in your area, is to bring on new people. So as you are referring people, when you refer customers or you refer drivers, if they're just going to be a customer or driver, that's fine. But always let them know about the referral program. And some of them are going to catch the vision. Uh, some of them are going to want to really start promoting this because they see an opportunity to create residual income. Uh, so you want to invite those type of people to this call. So that way we can convey the message. We can tell them everything about our company. Again, a lot of people just got, hey, you should sign up for this company. It's going to be the next biggest thing, but not a lot of the details. So that's what we're doing here today. So 
I'm not going to go too deep on the blockchain stuff. Um, we're already doing some spectacular things. We're already disrupting the industry uh, as far as the way we do business and with the whole referral program and paying our drivers more. But the most exciting thing to me anyways, uh, is that we're doing this all in the blockchain. We'll be uh, the first rideshare company that's built on the blockchain and using blockchain technology. And it's really going to kind of change the game. Because uh, one, if you're unfamiliar with blockchain, again, I was not the most uh, proficient with blockchain. I've just been recently getting into it, especially since, uh, you know, Tony and Paul and everyone else has been investing a lot of time, energy and money into it. And uh, quite frankly, a lot of the rich folks out there in the world, the billionaires, this is what they're talking about. This is what they're investing in. This is going to be the wave of the future. It's coming like a bull, whether you like it or not. Uh, kind of like the internet de uh, did in the, the dot-com days. Uh, again, I'm dating myself, but um, this is going to be the next big thing. Uh, and it's probably going to dwarf what the internet even did. So, But to give it basically a, a, a very basic high-level overview, in normal technology, when you have companies out there like banks and everybody else, uh, you usually have centralized computing, centralized storage, connectivity, power, networking, all of that is controlled by you know that particular bank or that particular company. And they track every transaction, they have access to all of that data, but also people have the ability to you know kind of go in there and you know hack and steal some of that data. You guys see it all the time. Uh, if someone could mute that someone's on. Um, but with the blockchain, what is it, what it does is it decentralizes everything. Instead of having everything siloed in one, you know, data center or data store, uh, we decentralize that and split that computing up between hundreds, if not thousands of nodes, uh, where all of that data is broken up. So one, it makes it very, very secure because, uh, no one computer or no one node will have all of the data. It's all bits and pieces. They all have a piece of the puzzle and you need to have 10 pieces of the puzzle to create uh, the blockchain. So um, let's take the ride share, for instance. If someone goes and orders a car, uh, it's they order the car at you know 9.59 p.m. Uh, they get this driver, it's this car, this is the route they take, here's how much it costs, here's how long they waited in traffic, here's what time we dropped them off, here's the address. The whole entire transaction we need to create a ledger and lock all of that data down and basically say, this is the transaction, this is a ledger, and this is what happened. So whoever has a node or whoever is helping us, you know, basically create that first block, these are blocks of data. So once we verify that information, one, that creates a block. Uh, but we need to be able to verify that. So we have nine other nodes to verify that same data. And if that data is the same uh, all, all along, the chain, then that uh, creates the chain. So that kind of decentralizes everything. It makes everything immutable, secure, very transparent, which is good for our business because if you're inviting a lot of drivers and riders and you're expecting to get paid overrides and residual referrals, you're going to want to know that we're actually paying you what we think you should be making or you know you should be making. So everything's going to be uh, you know, basically in stone in the blockchain. Uh, you can pull reports, you can see everything uh, and make sure that you know everything is on the up and up. So very, very high level. Again, I don't want to go too deep into the blockchain because I want to talk more about the company, uh, but this is something that I'm excited about. And again, Bill Gates even said, blockchain is the most important innovation since internet itself. Uh, and he's one of the first adopters of internet. And again, it's probably one of the reasons why he's one of the wealthiest people in the world. Uh, same thing with Bezos and uh, you know some of the other billionaires out there, uh, but it's going to change the way we think about money and business in the world. And he's absolutely right. Um, and that's again, what a lot of the billionaires and people are are talking about and adopting right now is the blockchain and, and blockchain technology. So uh, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, which if some of you uh, know about blockchain and cryptocurrency, um, you know, Bitcoin, I think, hit $62,000 today, which was the first time since it did it, uh, uh, what was it, like a, a year, uh, a little bit more than a year ago. So, but Everything in cryptocurrency, there's over 34 million adults in the U.S. that own crypto. I'm one of them. I have you know, owned crypto for quite a long time, but globally, it's over 420 million. And it's getting accepted as payments, I mean, to an extent. You can't really go to the grocery store and say, hey, I want to buy uh, you know, all of my bananas with Bitcoin because they don't take it. Um, you know, Some stores will take it. I know some dealerships and stuff are starting to take Bitcoin and some, you know, athletes and superstars want to get paid in Bitcoin. 
uh, in crypto. But, um, you know, for the most part, you can't actively just go out and spend your crypto. And a lot of the cryptocurrencies out there don't do anything. All it is is speculation. They have zero utility. You can't go and spend money. It doesn't do uh, anything. But we're going to actually have a coin, uh, which we're still you know, going to name that coin. And I don't know what that name is going to be yet, but we will have our own cryptocurrency that's going to be attached to our own blockchain, which is going to be the revolution blockchain. Uh, and then we'll have cryptocurrency. So and even have some mining capabilities and stuff for people that want to get into all of that. But our coin will actually have utility. Um, you can actually use it to purchase rides uh, within our platform. So say, for instance, if I'm at a restaurant and I'm trying to get a ride home, Maybe I go to Uber and it's a $50 ride, but then I pull up Revo and it's a $45 ride, but it says, hey, what if we can get that ride to you for 40 bucks? All you need to do is buy with whatever our token is, say the Rev token uh, that may or may not be the name. I'm just saying for this example. So uh, if you use the Rev token, then you can get that ride at you know $40. So you can save an extra five bucks and then it'll walk you through purchasing the Rev tokens directly through the app. Uh, and then you can purchase your ride, get the savings. And that's the first part of the utility. You have the purchase and you have actually using it for something. So in this case, we're using it for the ride. But then everybody's going to have the ability to earn some of the coins just by being in our organization. Every time a transaction happens, whether you're a rider and you take a ride, you're going to earn some of the coins. If you are a driver and you give a ride, uh, you're going to earn some of the coins. And we'll have other ways that people can earn coins as well including mining and some other things. Um, so mining, we're going to have node ownership. And if you're not familiar with nodes, again, uh, think of it kind of like, like a credit card processing machine. So if I'm at a, a restaurant and I eat the food, the restaurant's selling the food, we want to make that transaction. I only have a credit card. Well, you need to have a credit card processing machine uh, to be able to run that transaction. That credit card processing uh, company will probably take a small percentage, say 2.9%. Um, for doing that. So every time a transaction happens, that's how they make their money. So if you own a node, again, this is going to be how we're going to process all of these blocks, and it's going to be able to uh, you know, help us with that transaction. Um, every time you solve the puzzle and you, you know, do one of those blocks, you're going to be able to earn some of those coins. So then you're going to be able to sell those as well, because uh, if you own a bunch of coins, sometimes you want to you can't use those for you know your power bill and stuff like that. So sometimes you have to sell them out there in the open world to get some actual cash to pay for your stuff. So uh, drivers also they can't buy their gas and stuff with crypto, so they have to sell it on the uh, the open market and or exchange it to other people looking to buy it. And there's always going to be the speculators that just buy it just to see if it goes up or not, like people buy Bitcoin. So, but that gives it actual utility and real world function, uh, which I believe is going to drive the value of that coin and those nodes up. Um, dramatically. So not only do we pay our drivers more, it's less for the customers. Uh, everyone has the opportunity to earn residuals just by sharing us. But then we have this whole blockchain and crypto uh, piece on the back end of it as well, um, which could help a lot of people make a lot of money on that side. So again, other ex things that I'm excited about, you may or may not be excited, but I would get excited and do a little bit more research if you're unfamiliar. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is our founders program. So right now, you are on the launch pad with the rest of us. We're about to get into this rocket ship and go to the moon. Um, and you're on the ground level. So we have what we call the Founders Program. So you can become a founder of our company. That's what we're calling it. Uh, and you get rewards for being a founder. So there's two steps to becoming a founder. Uh, the first step is you need to get 60 people to sign up by March 11th. So I think we're at like... 13-ish days now, uh, there's 29 days in, uh, uh, yeah, so 12, 12 days, uh, 13, yeah, 12 days. So you have 12 days until March 11th to get 60 people to sign up, whether that's drivers, riders, we don't really care about the ratio, 30 and 30, 60 and 0, 40 and 20, it doesn't matter. 60 brand new people sign up with your referral links. If you sign up, you have your own referral codes, go give that to 60 other people and have that sign up before March 11th. So that's step one. Step two is between March 11th of 2024 and March 11th of 2025, uh, between you and those 60 individuals, direct people that you brought on, uh, you have that year to do 30 rides, uh, whether you're giving rides or taking rides, or if you bring on drivers and they're giving rides, that's all going to count. 
Um, so we're not making it too hard. These are not very high, uh, you know, high bars, not, you know, not too complicated. So, uh, but then you become a founder. If you do all of that, those two steps and you become a founder, what does that give you? Uh, we are going to have a profit sharing pool. Um, so the participates, participants that become founders of a company once a quarter, once we become profitable, again, we have to be profitable, but once we become profitable, uh, once a quarter, we're going to take 2% of the uh, net income or the net profits, and we're going to split those up amongst the founders, whether that's 10 people or 10,000 people, uh, they're going to get a nice little quarterly bonus. This is a uh, couple hundred billion dollar industry, and uh, rideshare is not going away anytime soon. It's probably going to be $250 billion plus by 2028. Uh, and even if we get a 10% share of that, that still makes us, uh, you know, close to a $20 billion company. And with our business model, I truly believe that we're going to take a lot more than 10% of the share. So that number could be a little for that uh, profit sharing pool, but that number could be a lot. And either way, it's free money just by doing those two steps uh, and taking advantage of that. So, but that's the founders program. Um, we do have uh, that in the back office as well. So again, we're launching uh, in Miami uh, in a couple of days, which is going to be Friday. But then after that, we had a pre-launch city, which was going to be Vegas, Nashville, Houston, Jupiter, and Miami. Actually, Jupiter and Miami are launching together. The same time we're launching Miami, we're also launching Jupiter. So those are going to be combined launches. But again, they're only about 30-ish 30, uh, minutes uh, from each other. So not, not too bad. But after that, we're going to go after the cities that have the most signups and the biggest presence of you folks. If you guys are out there building the city and you want it to come, uh, then we're going to work with the people that are you know, bringing in the most people to help them open up their city. So if everyone on this call could do me a favor and write in the chat what city you're in and what city you're in, uh, so that way we can work with you to open your city. Uh, we are looking for captains. If you're on here just to be a rider or driver or you just want to refer a couple of people and make some money, um, just as a part-time gig, that's perfectly fine. But we're also looking for captains or people that are excited and they want to get on board and open their city and earn residuals off of everybody. Um, those are what we're going to call captains. So if you put your city in the chat, then we will reach out to myself and Rodney so we can work with you to open up your city. And again, all of you people that are going to be captains, you're opening up your city, then you should be bringing new people onto this call. Uh, it's great that if you jump on this call every single week to see if something's new, a lot of the messaging will probably be the same, um, minus the new updates. Like as we're opening new cities, as we get new information, we will always make that readily available to you. Uh, but this is really for people that are brand new, they're excited, and they want to learn more. So uh, we have 14 people on this call today. Hopefully next week we have a hundred people. Uh, and if all of you, I know a lot of you, I know Medina, uh, how many people are you bringing on? You've probably brought on what a hundred by now, 200. I mean, you're rocketed over there. I see you on YouTube all the time. And a lot of you guys are out there bringing in lots of people. I have people on my team bringing in hundreds of people. So those are the type of people, the builders that you want to bring onto this call and that you want to lock arms with. Cause again, you have an opportunity to earn overrides off of what they build as well. So if you find someone that catches the fire, uh, and they go out there and they, you know, bring in a ton of, ton of people, you can make overrides off of all of those individuals. So the name of the game is to go and get as many people as possible. This is a literal land grab right now. Again, you are on the ground floor, you are on the launch pad, getting ready to launch off in the space with us, but you have to go out there and take advantage. Um, we are a, uh, a company that is going to go grow fast. And right now, you can probably talk to any of your friends and 99% of them will have never heard of Revo because it's a very small uh, group that is in the know of what's coming. But six months from now, once people catch wind of what's going on and they can make money and the blockchain and all the other things that we're doing and drivers making more money, the drivers are coming over in droves, people. Every driver I talk to, they're super excited about the new company out there. And they're like, man, yes, I'm jumping on board. I'm telling every driver I know, let's stick it to the man, the man being Lyft and Uber. Um, but they're all on board. They're joining the revolution. This thing is going to be huge, but the time to, uh, to strike is now. You have to go start telling everybody about it now. If you wait until all the influencers and TikTokers and everybody else catches wind and they want to get all their followers, you might have some of those people cross circles with your circles and you're going to miss out on some people that you could have brought on. Um, so 
go out there, take this seriously and really hit it hard. We want to open up your city uh, as quickly as possible. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. So, but that's what I have to share on the company itself. That's where we're going. That's where we're heading. Uh, and that's a little bit more about, um, you know, what's to come. So if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to jump on. If you guys have questions regarding the apps or the onboarding or anything else, we also do Q&A sessions. We just did one this last Saturday with Paul. Uh, we spent an entire hour just going over questions. Uh, we have that on recording also. Um, and then we do these type of calls where we do Q and A's and then onboarding as well. But the point is to figure out who the captains are so we can lock arms and rock this thing together. So I'll let you guys uh, speak if you guys have questions. I have a question. Shoot. Uh, out here in New York, um, we have something called the Taxi Limousine Commission. So uh, every, yeah. yep. everybody and yeah, it's like a, I, 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 um, I'm just learning that other places don't have that. You know, people can just submit their documents to Uber and get approved and start driving and they don't have to get this this license. How is that going to affect uh, Revo? Do I have to wait? That's the only reason I haven't really started hitting here because I know things here are different. Yeah, uh, same thing. I'll, there are certain states that are going to make it harder for us. California, New York. Um, I'm not sure about Chicago, but... When you think about New York, you just think about those yellow, ta yellow taxi cabs, everyone whistling in the movies and bringing up a taxi. There's hardcore taxi people that want to keep rideshare companies out because it's really cutting into what they're doing. The taxis are kind of like the blockbusters and we're the Netflix coming in to say, hey, we, we're taking over and they're really trying to hold on. So it's going to take more time for us to probably jump through the hoops, deal with all the politics and everything else. Uh, but once we do, then, you know, they have Uber and Lyft there. They had to do some kind of, uh, uh, you know, grease and palms or whatever to be able to do business there. And we'll do what we need to do. But for right now, we're going to stick with the cities. They're going to make it easy. Uh, if you're good at marketing, market in those cities. That's a beautiful thing about this, uh, this particular model is you can literally invite anyone from anywhere in the country and get paid as long as they're taking rides in a city that's open. So, so being decentralized doesn't make this process easy easy as far as like the situation in new york does it how does being on uh, decentralized affect or help or not help that particular situation yeah so when we're decentralized um you know one thing it's going to help us expand to other countries because uh, if you can use our you know cryptocurrency to be able to purchase rides or pay for rides and all that kind of stuff uh, it makes it easier to go into other countries and if we you know have everyone as a 1099 individual or self-employed and we're just a software, once we get our software approved in those countries, um, then people can pay or do the software as a service. That's why the drivers leave a buck, because uh, that's basically paying into being on our platform. Uh, so they're considered a true 1099 individual or whatever country they're going to have their own you know, version of 1099. It's probably not 1099 in Europe. They probably have something else for it, but self-employed uh, individual. So it's going to help us go to those other countries. Um, and it's going to, you know, make it easier to open up those gateways, not necessarily with the politics. We still have to make sure that like, for instance, some um, here in Arizona, our airport, the same thing. We have pretty hardcore taxi and limo services that unionize together. And they said, no, we don't want Lyft and Uber to be able to pick up at the actual terminal. You can't pull up to the curb and pick up directly in front of the terminal. They do have a, they negotiated and they got it. So we're, Lyft and Uber have to pick up on the actual road and they have a set, you have to cross the road and, you know, go and get picked up over there, but it is what it is. So we have to jump through those hoops. We probably have to deal with more stuff and unions and things here in Phoenix to be able to do the airports. Um, but we're going to do it. We want to be able to do airports everywhere, uh, but we may not be able to do the airports or certain cities right away until we figure out what those hurdles are and how we can jump through them, but it's coming. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Anytime. Anybody else? We have uh, about 14 minutes left, and I want to make sure that we use your guys' time. So, so it looks like we got some Vegas people. I know, Dan, uh, I'm working with the Vegas folks. Uh, you, I know I've been working with you and Darius and a few other people, but I'm also building a, a lot of people out there in Vegas to help grow this thing. So I want to have a Vegas-specific call 
uh, because that's wants to be one of the first cities that I open up as well, since it's only about five hours from me. So uh, we'll we'll get together. Nashville, Rodney's there. Um, Diana's in Brooklyn. You know, same thing with uh, with Medina. He's out there. So we'll work with you guys. Um, Herb Mason, Kalispell, Montana. Okay, well, we'll we'll get open in Mon. How how many people are in Montana? Is that a a small town, big town, third largest town in Montana? Well, the nice thing about where I happen to be at, uh, we're a tourist town, so we get uh, several million visitors every year come through to Glacier National Park. And also um, in the wintertime, we're near a ski resort. So uh, we used to be the best kept secret, but now they're uh, kind of getting us on the map. So we're busy in the winter with ski skiers coming into town. And then we're busy in the summer with all the tourists coming in. They're in the middle of expanding the airport. They just added a direct flight to JFK. And um, so, you know, the whole state, there's only probably a little over a million people. But the tourism is is what uh, what gets it. And I've got a couple of Uber drivers already recruited. And between. I think he froze. Hopefully you heard all that. My internet glitches. Yeah, we missed the very last part, but but that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it this can and that's a beautiful thing about rideshare. There could be rideshare literally in any city. As long as we have riders and drivers, we can open up a city and smaller towns and stuff like that. We won't and, need and as I, many to open. So and, and I'll add to that, uh, you won't have any regulation problems in Montana. <laughs> Very little. Right. So, What does John Dutton say about expanding that airport? You ever watch Yellowstone? Yeah, well, Yellowstone, that's down uh, near Bozeman. That's about six hours from here. Yeah, so, uh, I love that show. But that's, that's the whole thing for the second season, the stop in the airport. Right. From expanding, so. <laughs> but anybody else? All right. Well, Rodney, I'll give it back to you so you can uh, kind of round us out and finish it up. But, you know, we next time we have this call, we should get as many new people as possible. So if you're bringing on people, Medina, bring them all on this call. Same thing with you, Fred and Vivian and all of you guys that have uh, you know people on your teams. Bring them on this call. And then that way we can work together as a team to open up these cities fast and furious. We did this once with the uh, with the food delivery side and we're going to do it again. Uh, and we kind of I'm going to kind of use that as a. Uh, you know, blueprint for opening up ride share. So back to awesome, you. Ryan. Awesome. Great presentation, Alex. I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, when you find the recording, it'll be on either of our Facebook pages, or if you need it by email, let me know. And we will see you this time next week at eight o'clock Eastern, seven central. And I think that's five Arizona time. Is that right? He muted. That's okay. <laughs>